Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at a brand new field day logging program. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Last year, right before Phil Day, I brought you guys FD Log. I'll leave a link to that video right up at the top. But it seems like development has pretty much stopped on that software. So I went out searching for something new for this year and ran across the K4 CPO Field Day Logger. I got in touch with the developer Lee and he was kind enough to send me a copy. Guys, this is really sharp software. And the cool thing about it, it's browser-based. So once you get it loaded up, provided you can network your Raspberry Pi or get your Raspberry Pi on a network during field day, we can share this logging software with everybody. It only requires a browser to be able to go in and log. So we can do this uh, from your phone, from your Pi, from a tablet. Shoot, we can do this from a Windows machine. So you're looking at the software now. Uh, you'll notice I am running it in my browser. You can see the address right up here uh, in the top left corner. Now, I've already filled in uh, our club call sign here. I told it that I'm working the 40 meter digital, or I'm sorry, the 40 meter band, and I'm working digital mode. So when you're ready to log, you can simply type in a call sign. Let's see if I can type. And we'll say this is one echo, Tennessee. And guys, I'm just using the tab key to move through these fields. Now I'll go ahead and press the enter key and you'll notice that it has me logged. So now that you've kind of got a quick glimpse and we'll come back and take more of a look at this in a few minutes, let's show you guys how to get this installed on your Pi so you can use it for fill day. The first stop we're going to make is over on my GitHub page. Lee was kind enough to let me host this on my GitHub. So let's stop by the GitHub page and right up at the top, and guys, I'll leave a link to GitHub across the screen right here, but right up at the top, let's click on repositories. And then we're going to want to look for K4 CPO FD logger. Let's go ahead and click into that. Let's come down to the green button that says clone or download. We're going to click that and we're going to highlight all of the text in that box and copy it. Now let's go ahead and head over to the Raspberry Pi. Before you begin with these steps, make sure you run a sudo apt-get update and a sudo apt-get upgrade. I've already performed that just to save a little bit of time in this video. Make sure you're in your home directory. If you're uncertain, you can always type CD and return to bring you into your home directory. The first command we're going to use is git clone. So G-I-T space clone space. And we're going to go ahead and paste in that link that we copied from the GitHub site. We'll go ahead and press return and give that just a second. Now we'll just leave that sitting there in the background for now. Guys, this does run on a web server and a database. So we're going to need to install all of that software. So the next command we're going to need is sudo apt-get install y php7.3 mariadb-server and php my admin and guys i'll leave links or uh, i'll leave all of these commands down in the description below so you can copy and paste as well i'll go ahead and hit return now this is going to take uh, a little bit of time to get installed but as it uh, asks questions because it does ask a couple going through i'll be back and show you guys exactly what you need to enter this is one of the first screens you'll be presented with. Now we can't use the mouse here, it doesn't work. So you'll notice that red square right there. I'm going to press the space bar on the keyboard and you'll notice the little star pop up. Then I'm gonna use my tab key to move to OK and then I'm gonna use my enter key on the keyboard to enter that answer. 
and after a few minutes you're going to be presented with this screen. Again, we can't use the mouse here, we've got to use the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and select the default answer of yes. You'll notice it's highlighted red there. I'm going to select that by pressing the enter key. Then it's going to ask me for a password and I'm going to have to enter this password twice. So enter whatever password you want here. When you're done, you're going to press the tab key to highlight OK and press enter. It's going to ask you to confirm it, so we're going to do the exact same thing again. Enter the password, tab for OK, and enter to accept that answer. Now that it's finished up, let's go ahead and just clear that screen. We've got everything installed, now we just need to do some setup. Let's go ahead and move into the directory we need with CD space. We'll do a capital K, the number four, press the tab key and it will auto complete that for you. Once we're inside that folder, let's run nano space setup. When this file opens, you need to change your username and password up here. So for the sake of the video, I'm going to take this out. Now guys, all of this is case sensitive and do not uh, delete the quotation marks. And my password, we'll just use the usual. Let's press Control X, Y, and then Enter to get out of that file. And then let's run bash space setup. It's going to ask you for a password. There is no password in this particular case. So we'll just press return on the keyboard or enter and it will dump us right back out to the command prompt. Next, we're going to create a subdirectory on our web server so we have a subdirectory to move all of the necessary files into. So we'll use sudo space mk dir space forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html forward slash log. Go ahead and press return. And next up, we need to make that directory writable. And the reason we need to do this is uh, when we get ready to export the ADIF file, it writes to this directory. So we'll do sudo chmod777 forward slash, and then we're going to give it this same path right here. So forward slash for www.html log. Press return and it will dump you back to the command prompt once again. Now we need to copy all of our files to the correct directory. So we're going to use sudo cp star and then this same path again. var www, whoop, one too many w's there, html log. And we'll go ahead and press return. And we need one more change here before we get started. So we'll use sudo nano forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html forward slash log forward slash constraints dot php. We'll go ahead and press enter here. And what we're looking for is these two lines here, the database user and the database password. And these are going to be the exact same ones that you used in the setup file just a couple of minutes ago. So for the username, I'm going to put my call sign and the password was KM4ACK1234. Let's press Control X, Y, and Enter to save and exit that file. That's it. The setup is done on the command line. Let's go ahead and open the web browser. I'll go ahead and maximize that screen. And let's type in 127.0.0.1 forward slash log. That's our subdirectory. And then we're going to give it a question mark and the word setup. We'll go ahead and press return. That should bring you into this screen here. Once we're on this screen, we need to build and clear the database. So right over here on the left-hand side, we'll use this link. We'll go ahead and click on it. It takes just a couple of seconds, and we should see a notice pop up here that the database has been built or cleared. 
Now, back up in our address bar, I'm going to take out everything except for the 127.0.0.1 forward slash log and go ahead and press return. And you'll see that it's brought us into our logger and we are ready to begin logging. Now, if you want to make this a little bit bigger on the Pi, you can use the control or hold the control button and press the plus sign on the keyboard and it will go ahead and make this a little bit larger and easier to see. Now let's talk about using this on field day. If you're running a monitor keyboard and mouse plugged up to your Raspberry Pi, you can simply open the web browser and navigate to this uh, 127.0.0.1 forward slash log, and you would be presented from this screen. If you're running the hotspot on the Raspberry Pi, in order to connect to this, after you've established uh, your connection to the Raspberry Pi, you can actually open the web browser on your wireless device, and then you're going to navigate to 10.10.10.10 forward slash log, and you would be presented with this screen here. Now, let's take this a step further. Let's say we want to network this and allow everybody at our field day site to log in so we can all use the same log. And this is the preferred way to do this. We can do this with a couple of different uh, devices or a couple of different ways. A, we could plug this up to a wireless router using a Cat5 cable and then allow anybody to navigate to the Pi's IP address and then forward slash log. We could also do the same thing with mesh networking. So if your club uh, uses Arden's mesh networking at field day, then we can simply plug this thing up to one of the Arden nodes, get the Pi's IP address, and allow people to log that way. In order to find the Pi's IP address, we can come into the terminal window and type hostname. Let me get that mouse out of the way. So it's hostname space hyphen capital I. Go ahead and press return. So this is the Pi's IP address right now. And I do have this particular Raspberry Pi connected up to my mesh network. So I'm going to remember this for just a second. Let's go ahead and type in that AB4ZB again. Let's tell it 40 meters. Let's tell it digital. And I'm going to log a call here. One Echo Tennessee and submit. And you'll see that this pops up here. Now, let's move over to my Mac web browser and enter that address that we saw right here. So, quick copy in case I forgot that while ago. Now I'm on the Mac's web browser. I'm going to paste in that address that I just copied. Remember, we have to put the forward slash log at the end of it. And there we go. We see the logger here. Now I already had uh, the AB4ZB typed in here. This right here is what links all of the stations together. So let's go ahead and enter a new call sign here. We'll use W4RPW just because I like to pick on Rick. And we'll make him uh, a one alpha station in Alabama. Now notice, guys, uh, it tells you right here what the section is. So AL is Alabama. I'm going to press the S key on the keyboard. And you'll notice I get Santa Barbara. If I press the S key again, I get South Carolina. Once again, we, you know, so it keeps changing every time I press the S key on the keyboard. Going back to the A key, there's Alberta, there's Alaska, and there's Alabama. We'll go ahead and use Alabama for this example. And let's go ahead and submit that information. So you'll notice it added him down here to the log and tells us uh, all of the information that we need. Now, let's jump back over to the Raspberry Pi for a second. We'll minimize that terminal window and you notice that it has synchronized our log so that we have that information here on the Raspberry Pi screen as well. If you need to edit one of the entries you made, you can always come over here to the call sign and click on that. And 
let's say that we didn't uh, mean to enter him in Alabama. That was actually a Tennessee station. So we'll change that to Tennessee and say update the record. You'll notice now it is updated here in the section. Let's go back to the browser on the uh, Mac machine and let's take a look at it. And you'll notice that it just updated there as well. So it keeps your logs perfectly synchronized across your field day site, uh, provided you network or put your Raspberry Pi on the network. There you have it. Lee has done an outstanding job on building a cross-platform field day logger for us to use this year. Be sure to give Lee a shout out down in the comments below and let him know that you enjoyed this piece of software. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.